You're listening to the My Simplified Life Podcast, and this is episode number 190. Welcome to the My Simplified Life Podcast, a place where you will learn that your past and even your present don't define your future. Regardless of what stage of life you're in, I want you to feel inspired and encouraged to pursue your dreams, simplify your life, and start taking action today. I'm your host, Michelle Glogovac, and I'm excited to share my stories and life lessons with you while taking you on my own journey. This is my simplified life. Hey friends, welcome back to another episode. I'm your host, Michelle Glogovac. I promised myself, and I probably did at some point in the show, to give you a one-year update on my health scare from July of 2022. If you recall, right after my 41st birthday, I woke up with extreme back pain, and I stupidly thought it's just a pinched nerve, maybe if I lie on my side, it'll go away, and instead it didn't. It just got worse. I had called my doctor, tried to get an appointment, and if you recall, because everyone should, my doctor's office said, we'll see you on Friday, and this was Monday. I could not wait that long, and I did call back to even see the janitor. I remember saying, I will see anyone. Please get me in. And they said no. So I went to the ER, and I didn't just have one blood clot. I had a pulmonary embolism in which my lungs were completely filled with blood clots. It was to the point that the ER doctor said, if I had waited until Friday, per the doctor's office instructions, I would be dead. So this brings us to now, a year later, I have taken Eliquis. It's a blood thinner twice a day, every single day since I got out of the hospital. I went in for routine blood tests where they check something called the D-timer, and that can tell the physician whether or not there's evidence of blood clots in your body. And I talked to my doctor all the time. Uh, it, It was never an issue to get through to him, which was amazing. But the worry still continued, and in all honesty, in June, and probably May even, it started to hit me that the year was coming up, and I was struggling with the anxiety of what happens if he takes me off the blood thinners? How will I know if I'm having more blood clots? Is it going to be to the point where I wake up one night and I'm in severe pain and know that once again, I'm going to have to be admitted to the hospital because we weren't keeping track of it or checking it, or I wasn't taking medication to ensure that this wasn't happening. So I started talking more to my therapist about it. I talked to my husband about it. I talked to my friends about it. And it was really in just communicating what this fear was about. And then I had my follow-up appointment with my hematologist, and I told him these were my fears as well. So before we had our one-year follow-up video exam, I went in for another blood test, and they took a lot. (laughs) They took five vials, and I'm talking big ones. And then I also went in for a CT scan. And when they tried to give me the instructions for it, I said, don't bother. I remember exactly what this is going to feel like because they inject you with this fluid that makes your whole body feel very warm. It's weird. I don't recommend it in all honesty. So I did that, and then the results came back that there was no evidence of blood clots. The blood test came back fine, the CT scan came back fine, and they did it of my entire abdomen and whatnot. So it was the all clear. And talking to my doctor, he said that my job really now is to embrace life. He is calling this a uncategorized blood clot. And that means that at the time I was on oral contraceptives. So we believe that the estrogen from that is what caused the blood clots. I am no longer on those. Those got thrown out the moment I got into the ER and I will never be on them for the rest of my life uh, because the genetic testing also came back as negative. I don't have the gene that can cause blood clots either. So all of this was eye-opening. The entire year was eye-opening. And what my doctor said to me is, as we wrapped things up was that I don't need to look at blood thinners or any medicine as a type of crutch or a fallback to prevent this because it's not going to happen again. And I know that he can't make that guarantee. No, Nobody can for any kind of disease, but I have a lot of trust in him that he wouldn't just release me and say, you know, go with the wind 
and I'll never see you again. In fact, I actually told him he's stuck with me forever um, because I will always remain in contact with him. I, I adore him so much. But one of some of the things that I learned from it is that I do need to focus on myself. I need to stop doing all the things, stop saying yes. I need to sit on my hands. I love that saying that Emma Isaacs introduced me to. When you want to raise your hand and volunteer, sit on your hands and, you know, reject that notion that you need to be the one. And I did that. I made this entire year the year of basically resignation, resigning from the PTA and saying, this is my hard stop you know, reducing my activities when it comes to volunteering to lead the Boy Scouts and the Girl Scouts. And I am leading both still in some capacity, but I'm doing it with immense help. I'm not planning all of the meetings. I'm not scoping out the location. I'm absolutely not doing any of that. And in fact, the Girl Scout troop is reduced. We split into two. It's a much more manageable group this year. For the Boy Scouts, I'm making it that every parent has to plan a meeting, including the location. I'll just do the the kind of admin work of making sure that everybody gets their badges when it comes to entering the stuff online, but I don't need to be the planner. There are plenty of other parents out there. On top of that, you know, I have a job too. I have a book that's coming out. I need to do more for what's good for me. So in doing all of this this year, I also noticed as the spring was coming, summer was coming, I was still having this weird back pain. And it felt like similar pain to when I had the blood clots. And so this was one of my concerns that I brought up to my doctor, my therapist. But when I paid attention to the pain, did some deep breaths and thought, what is it that's bothering me right now? What am I stressing out over? The pain would go away. So I feel that now my body and I are communicating better together. It's letting me know that, hey, you need to slow down. You need to back up. You need to stop doing whatever it is that's causing the stress because it's not worth it. At the end of the day, there's nothing that is worth enough to cause my body the kind of stress for it to let me know that this isn't going to work. You you need to just bring it down. One thing that I wish that I would bring up <laughs> would be that I pay more attention to uh, working out and exercising and treating my body that way. I think that there's the mental aspect in which I'm listening to my body of mentally what is stressing me out. But I also need to pay more attention to physically, what can I do to better my body? I bought a rowing machine in June. And when I say bought, I'm so frugal, if you know me. Um, I actually had a gift card and there was a sale. And so it actually ended up being free. But (laughs) uh, I now have a rowing machine in my sunroom. And at six in the morning, when I'm normally getting up, I'm getting up and going out there to row for 10 or 15 minutes. It's quiet. Nobody's awake at 6 a.m. That's a beautiful thing, especially in my neighborhood. It's cool. And the sunroom is just, it's my happy place. If you see on Instagram, I'll post when I'm out there on the weekends, writing in my journal, drinking my coffee. And this is how I'm starting my day. And I was doing it before we went on vacation in July. I'm starting back up again. I want to incorporate some weights because, hey, I'm over 40 now. And The bone density and all of that stuff is is becoming more and more important. And then the other aspect is eating better. I'm a carb lover through and through carb, cheese, like give me all of the yummy food, wine. Yes, please. Uh, So this is something that I'm striving to get ahead of as well, especially as school is about to start back up. That means that soccer is starting back up which then correlates to at least three or four nights a week when we will not be home in time for me to cook a full meal. And I like to take about an hour or so. 30 minutes would be awesome, but it's usually an hour for me to cook dinner that you know is healthy, that everything is, it's either on the stove or in the oven or whatnot. So now I'm having to plan ahead again, more slow cooker meals, but that also takes planning and making sure that they're healthy in whatever we do. And then passing that along to my children, because I have one who is a total meat lover and the other one who's all about fruits, but there's no quite balance in between the two. So as their taste buds change, that'll change too. But these are all things that I'm trying to focus on more in addition to, you know, what's making me happy? What is it that I am doing in my business that makes me excited that I want to do more of? What is it in my personal life that I enjoy more of? Who are the people in my life? And I think that's a really big, important one to look at and reflect on. I was interviewed by Matt Gilhooly uh, recently on The Life Shift, and he was on my show as well last month. 
But if you listen to it, he brought something up to me because when I said that I was going to resign from a lot of these volunteer positions, there were a number of adults who questioned it. Well, can't you just do a little bit? Can't you just do this part? Can't you just do this? Just do this. And he hit the light bulb when he said they really lack empathy. And it's so true. When someone has had an experience as I did, and to say I need to step back to focus on myself more because I was within days of dying, and to turn around and say to that person, why don't you just do this? Keep at it. That is such bullshit. And these are the people that I don't want anywhere near my life because they don't empathize not just with me, but with human beings in general. You know, really, what kind of a person says that? I'm stepping back from those types of people. They won't be in my circle. I don't want them really in my quote unquote world because I'm doing too much and they expect it and they want it and they're going to demand it. And nobody can do that to you. Quite honestly, nobody has the right to demand you to do anything, especially after you've had such an event happen in your life. And these are the things that I've been learning in the past year. It took this major health scare for me to reflect on all of this and to say, this is enough. I am done. I had already started using my voice and you know, letting people know what my opinion is and stating right from wrong years ago, but I wasn't standing up for myself as much as I deserve to. And now I am. And it's a wonderful feeling. It's a scary feeling, but at the same time, it's what's good for me and what is good for, I think, anyone. We need to do more of this. We need to respect ourselves, show up for ourselves, and put ourselves first. And it's not selfish. It's what we deserve. And we should have a right to ensure that our lives are led with this kind of happiness and just fulfillment. And that's really what I'm going after. I'm making sure that my time is for me. It's for my family. It's for everything that I want to prioritize, what I want my life to be like, the legacy I want to leave. And I see this reflecting already in my kids as they look at what I'm doing. And I've said, you know, I'm going to step back from doing this and I'll continue, you know, being your leader for this, but I'm not going to do quite so much. I'm only going to do X, Y, Z. And my kids, they're, they're not sad about it. They go, we understand, mommy. You have a lot to do. You do a lot. And others can start helping, and they should. And they get that. And they're helping around the house. They're amazing, tiny little human beings who I want to grow up with empathy for others because I don't want them to be demanding of anyone, including themselves. I want them, if they demand something of themselves, it's to be happy and to be fulfilled and to put themselves first in the right way, to empathize with others and recognize what someone else is going through and how they can help that person versus how they can demand that person do more for them. I think these are the most important lessons that I've learned in the last year. The legacy I want to pass on to my children, to you as listeners, to put yourself first to let that be okay, to demand your happiness and your fulfillment, and to demand that there are people in your lives who want the same for themselves and for you, and for it to be a joyous time, a joyous life. That's really what's going to light every single one of us up, is if we're doing what we love most, we're putting ourselves first, Others are allowing us to do that too. They're okay with it. They're cheering us on. They're saying, yes, take that 30 minutes and work out and do what you need to do to better yourself versus taking that 30 minutes to go find a cafeteria for a scout meeting. It's a balance. It's it's figuring out what is of importance and doing that. And so I leave you a year later with these reflections. I'm no longer afraid of not taking the medicine of knowing what my body is telling me and that it's not telling me you're days from dying, hurry to the hospital, but saying, I'm warning you, whatever you're doing right now is not good. So take a pause and reflect on what it is that you can change to make it better, to make yourself more comfortable and to stop stressing out. Listen to your body and take that pause because when you do pause and just let the silence sit in, you're gonna figure that out. 
you're going to see what you need to do to make those changes and to make sure that your mind, your body, your soul are all aligned with what is best for you. What's going to keep you here on this earth for the longest amount of time possible? Because I want to hear from you. Your voice needs to be heard. My voice needs to be heard. And the only way that we can do that is by listening to ourselves, focusing on what needs to be done, empathizing with others, and living life to the fullest.